Yo, what's going on everybody? Kenan here and it's time for another one of our crib notes. The special, it's 10 tortoises in 10 minutes. Our animal mission is simple. Education in action, conservation in action. This is Camp Kenan. First up, it's going to be the leopard tortoise. There it is. It is Pardalis, or now it's Stigmachelli's Pardalis babcocki, and there's also Pardalis pardalis. But now I think they're actually combined them, so it is just one species of tortoise. Now these guys live in Africa, uh, in East Africa, from Ethiopia all the way down to South Africa, so they have a huge range. Some of them actually encounter really cold temperatures. One thing they don't encounter too much is high humidity, which is interesting because here in Florida, these guys have been acclimated and they're doing well. They're a grassland species. They live mainly out there on the plains and they are special in eating grasses. Uh, they can also eat leaves and flowers and of course in captivity they take the prepared tortoise diets uh, and they also will eat uh, some of the produce. But the one other thing, oh, we gotta go? Oh, it's yeah, already a minute? Well, real quick, uh, they also have these high dome shells and scientists theorize it's because they live in areas where there are elephants, so when the elephants touch them, they're like, hey man, we gotta go. All right, there you go. Come on, let's go over here. We gotta go into the enclosure for this next tortoise because he's just hanging out in this particular area. Let's get this movement going. You first, Tom, watch your head. Snake. Okay. Here we are, and there he is. That is the Burmese mountain tortoise. That is the brown variety. That guy is a brown mountain tortoise. They're from Southeast Asia. They go all the way from Eastern India down the Malay Peninsula, Southeast Asia, uh, and into some parts of Indonesia. That is a beautiful tortoise. These guys are also the fourth largest tortoise on Earth. They can reach size. One of their subspecies, the black mountain tortoise, can reach sizes of up to 100 pounds. These guys are true forest species where they actually live in soak in these forest pools, and they actually love canopy. They eat a wide variety of fruits and vegetables uh, and some they'll scavenge as well. This is also one of the only species that builds a nest and protects it like a crocodile. So there you go. Now Tom, since we're in here, it's tortoises. Are we sticking just with tortoises or since we're here should we talk about the Chinese box turtle? Another Asian species of turtle. I think we should because we're going to keep this game rolling along. There's the Chinese box turtle. These guys are found in Taiwan and mainland China. Very beautiful species. It's called Quora. Uh, Quora Flavo Marginata and that's because of this uh, Flavo Marginata means orange or excuse me yellow stripe down the margin, the middle of their back. Uh, this is an omnivorous species. They will take the water a little bit but they mostly wander around on land. They have a hinged plastron like our North American box turtles. They'll eat earthworms insects, arthropods, small crustaceans like land snails, uh, oh that's a mollusk actually, uh, and they'll uh, you know eat also some fruits. So this is a really cool species as well. One to three eggs is customary for a female to lay. Awesome. Endangered too. Let's keep it moving man. Let's keep it moving. Watch your head Tom. Okay, you gotta remind Tom all the time because he hits things like that. See? Uh, Alright, so here we go. Now we're gonna move on into the Greek tortoises here. Let's go check them out. Oh, before we do, might as well stop and see these guys. Here are the cherry head tortoises. Now, some of you may be splitting hairs. We're gonna do two variations of the cherry head. We're gonna do the cherry head, and we're also gonna do the redfoot tortoise. But here are the cherry heads. These are Brazilian cherry heads found in a small area in Brazil. These guys, by and large, are redfoot tortoises, but they keep their red head and they don't get as large. You're looking at about as large as they get if they are Brazilian cherry heads. They're extremely colorful. Uh, they have marbling on their uh, carapace and plastron and overall are just an extremely beautiful tortoise. Very popular in the pet trade and they are too what I would like to call a forest and an all-around tortoise. They'll venture into grasslands and they'll also kind of stay in the forest and of course they're very heavily herbivoriously uh, influenced in their diet 
And now we'll just flow right into this next species. These are the Greek tortoises. Of course, these animals are found in Greece and other parts of the Mediterranean. Watch your head when you come on in. Uh, they're also lunatics. This one is in particular. You guys know this tortoise. Uh, so basically, these guys, since they're from a Mediterranean area, are interested in eating or living in a very drier, more moderate climate where temperatures in the summer can reach over 100 degrees. So they will seek shade in small pallets and under bushes and in burrows if they can get it. Uh, these guys are really fantastic because they are a small species and do well in captivity. And they're also, uh, like the leopard tortoise, they are very, very adapted to eating browse and graze. And meanwhile, my uh, rhino is eating my shoe. Let's get out of here, shall we? All right, we're moving along. Come on, guys. Oh, God, you're a lunatic. Oh, so crazy. Okay, the next species on our tortoise trek happens to be right over here. It's a species you know I love, obviously, because I keep them. It's the elongated tortoise, and these guys are also found in Southeast Asia, like the Burmese mountain tortoise. And in many ways, these guys are very similar in habitat, uh, in habit and habitat. In food, they're gonna eat the exact same things, fruits, vegetables, leaves, weeds, grasses, all of that good stuff. Uh, and also they're called the yellow-headed turtle because, well, they got nice yellow heads. And in the breeding season, the male's heads will turn pink. These guys like high humidity, can take cooler temperatures because they are found like the mountain tortoises at altitude. And here at Camp Kennan, I love this species because they don't get big, they're hardy, and they're often not found in uh, high volumes in the uh, pet trade, but they are under threat because of use in traditional Chinese medicine and in the food trade. So I just love this species. And this particular group was a group that was confiscated out of the wild, uh, out of the food markets many, many years ago. And they're doing very well here at Camp Kennedy. All right, we're gonna keep moving. It's the redfoot tortoises. Yes, it is. Red foot tortoises. We were talking a little bit about their cousins or the subspecies of them, which is called the cherry head. But the red foot tortoise gets much larger. They're found in South America and some islands in the Caribbean where they were introduced. These guys are some of the most friendly tortoises you'll ever find. They are very well represented in captivity here in North America and across the globe. They do very well. They don't get too huge, but they do get a moderate size. Some can reach, oh, almost 24 inches in straight line length. The males are gonna have more of a wasping, as you can see here. They get this wasping, whereas the cherry heads, the males don't get that. So they'll have a wasping, they'll have the concave plaster on and the long tail if you're a male, and if you're a female, you're gonna have the flat bottom and a short tail. But they're a beautiful species and very inquisitive, as I've said over and over, even in this video, as they start pouring out of their shelter. These guys are going to eat fruits and vegetables and, of course, the prepared diets. And these, too, will eat some animal matter if they can find it and it's not too fast. So it's either going to be dead matter, where we're, what we call carrion, or it's going to be a slug or an earthworm or something like that. Okay, what are we up to? I don't even know. We're just going to keep going. Hey, look, it's a sulcata tortoise. He can be next on our list. One of the most popular pet tortoises in the world. It's also the third largest. This is Hercules. Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. I love these guys. These guys range all the way across the Sahel region of Africa, which ranges from Ethiopia along that southern fringe of the, of the uh, uh, Sahara Desert into Sudan and uh, Mali and all across uh, from one side of the continent to the other. Wide range. However, in their range, they're under extreme pressures because the food. Uh, unfortunately, over there, some people are starving, and this is a great food source, you can imagine. Being the third largest tortoise species, it's got a lot of meat on its bones. But here in the United States, this animal is actually overrepresented in some cases, and it's kind of a win-lose situation. I think it's a win because we know these animals aren't going to go extinct, but it's a lose if people buy them and don't have the room to care for them. These are true grazing species like the leopard, eat the exact same foods. They love to graze. They eat the weeds and leaves and all that good stuff, but they are an incredible tortoise, and they're called the sulcata tortoise. It's Latin for sculpted or furrowed, and you can see these amazing amazing front legs which are designed for drawing out and digging and making massive burrows. Very cool species. I happen to love them. Third largest in the world. Let's go see some of the largest in the world though. Okay, here is another one of our 
tortoise species we're going to talk about today. This is, of course, an Aldabra tortoise. Oh, come on up there, Mr. Aldabra. This is Nostradamus. Now, Nostradamus is a male Aldabra, and they'll reach sizes of about 600 pounds. They're found in the Indian Ocean. Um, the Aldabra Atoll, historically, which is nothing more than some coral that's poking out of the tops of, uh, uh, right out, the, out of the Indian Ocean, uh, barely an island, and there's not a lot of vegetation, and it's amazing that these animals adapted to live there. They probably got there from the mainland of Africa and Madagascar uh, from rafting. In fact, there have been some very large Aldabras found floating way out in the Indian Ocean with barnacles on them, so that means they were out in the ocean for a long time. If barnacles have grown on them and that's how they would colonize other islands and so they are now found on the Seychelles Islands and they are just an incredible species like I said one of the largest in the world only certain islands of the Galapagos have tortoises larger than the Aldabras uh, they can be told that you can tell the difference between the Aldabra and the Sulcata because here if you look at his nose he's got more of a pointed face and the Aldabras have what's called a nuchal scoot these are also grassland grazers but even though they don't have much grasslands, they eat grasses, weeds, some fruit, and uh, basically anything they can. I've even seen them munching down on some crabs in the wild, so it happens from time to time, but by and large, they're just basically eating ve uh, vegetation. Beautiful species. Let's find their cousins, uh, the Galapagos. This is the final tour, I think. Is it really? Come on, I can't believe it. Ready? So what do you do when it's extremely hot out and you want to get out of the sun? You come under a nice beautiful ficus tree. These are my two Galapagos tortoises. That's Darwin, the big gal, and the smaller gal's named Socrates. Uh, it's not exactly a guy's name, but we're going to do what we got to do. So this is the deal with the, the Galapagos tortoises. Each island has a different subspecies of Galapagos tortoise. Uh, maybe one day we'll be able to go to the islands and we can show you those. But for now, we're going to talk generally about the Galapagos tortoise. Like I said earlier, some of the islands have tortoises that will rival the Aldabra tortoises in size upwards of 600 pounds so they are going back and forth between which is the largest species of tortoise the Galapagos tortoises rafted sometime many many thousands of years ago to the Galapagos Islands from the mainland of uh, South America and it was Charles Darwin who made these animals famous of course with his theory of evolution these guys are going to eat uh, basically uh, the same exact foods as the leopard sulcatas and the Aldabra and they are a beautiful species so there you have it guys we did it man I I believe we have nailed 10 species of tortoise or colonian because we have the Chinese box turtle in there, so it's not all tortoises. So it's 10 plus one, I guess, right? Was it really? Yeah, it's all, the box turtle threw us off. But that's Did okay. it really? It ah, it bonus. doesn't matter. It was a bonus. We're honest here. Uh, was it though? Did we really manage to get 10 tortoises? Well, if the we cherry did the... head and the red foots are two different, that's, that's right. 10. Right? All right, well, there I you go. Think, I think okay, so. I love how we're trying to figure this out as we go. If you guys love the videos, go to Camp Cannon uh, and like and subscribe here on this channel. You can also help us out by going to patreon.com slash Camp Cannon. If you find value in these videos, and you want to see more of them, every little bit helps out. Plus, you get some content you won't see anywhere else. And uh, there you have it. Hey, Socks, thanks for joining us. We'll have more of these videos as we unfold here at this channel. We're really excited to bring you the best reptile education out there. So thanks so much, and we'll see you soon. Bye, guys.